Hey, what's up YouTube? Jeremiah Hersey here. Welcome back to the next PL300 test prep question. Today we're going to be looking at reducing query load time. Now, in order to do this, a best practice is to remove any columns that you're not going to be using inside of your tables and removing any rows that are not going to be necessary for analysis. So the more columns and the more rows that you have, the longer it's going to take to load that query into the Power BI desktop and additionally on refresh as well. And so there's not much prep for this video. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into our test prep question. Let's go ahead and get started. Question says you have a Power BI query named sales that imports the columns shown in the following table. And so we have ID that represents the sale. We have a sales date and it says that the column extracts the date of the sales and notice that over here the sample value. So it's got a date and a time. The customer ID which represents the customer ID number. Delivery time which is delivery time in hours and it can contain null values. This is an important piece of information here because as it contains null values, there's going to be empty rows with inside of that delivery time column. We also have the status, which is the sales status. It contains only two values, finished and canceled. And we have the canceled date, which can contains the date and the time it can also contain null values as well. It says users only use the date part of the sales date field. Only rows with a status of finished are used in the analysis. You need to reduce the load times of the query without affecting the analysis. Which two actions should you choose to achieve this goal? And so as we look at this, some of the important things that we need to point out here is that it tells us that we only need the date part of the sales date field. So as we look at this section right here, we're only concerned with the date part of this sample value. And so we're going to need to separate this in some way. And so we're going to have a date and a time associated to the sales. The other part that is important is that only rows with a status of finished are used in the analysis. So as we look at the status column here, it tells us that there are two values. We have finished and we also have canceled as well. So there's two different values with inside of this field. And so as we are focusing in on making the right choices in order to reduce the query load times, we can remove some of the information that is not going to be used. And so if we're only concerned with the finished value with inside of the status, then that means that we can eliminate canceled. And so we can eliminate any row with inside of our query that has to do with cancel because we're only concerned with the finished status and we're also going to need to separate this date and time with inside of the sales date column. So as we look through our answer choices, one of my test prep strategies or test taking strategies is to identify incorrect answers first and go ahead and eliminate that to reduce how many choices that I have to choose the correct answer. And so as I look through here, the first thing I notice is the option C deals with delivery time. Nothing in the question talked about using the delivery time for any piece of our analysis. And so this is not going to be a correct answer choice. So as I go through the answer choices, I'm looking for things that do not relate to the question specifically, and I'm going to go ahead and eliminate those. The next thing that I kind of look for is, all right, I know that I'm going to be dealing with sales date, so let me look at the answer choices related to sales date. And so we see option B. So option B says remove the sales date. Well, if we remove the sales date, that's going to remove all of the data that's within inside of that column because every value has a sales date. And it tells us that we need the date part 
of the sales date field. And so I cannot remove sales date. That is not going to be a correct answer choice. So now that I've eliminated two of the potential options or answer choices with inside of this, I've narrowed down to three. I can start kind of focusing in on what might be the correct answer. So option A says remove the rows in the sales status column that has a value of canceled. And you might be wondering, how do I know that this is the status column? Well, inside of Power BI, the way that it's set up is that the first part is going to be the name of the table. And so typically it's identified with single tick marks. And so it would look something like this. So it would say sales. Anything that's inside of a bracket is going to be a column. So whatever is inside of the bracket is going to be the name of the column. And that's just typical of how Power BI is going to differentiate between tables and columns. So the first part is going to be our table, sales, and the second part in the bracket is going to be our column that we're going to be focusing on. And so it says remove the rows in which sales status has a value of canceled. Well, that is a potential option because it says that we are only concerned with the status of finished. And so if we remove any rows that has the value of canceled or filtered it out, that's going to allow us to reduce how many rows are within inside of this table. So this is definitely a potential option. So I'm just going to identify what's a potential option. Remember that it tells us that we need to choose two actions to achieve this goal. So we need to make sure that we look through all th three of these before choosing the correct answer. So then option D says split sales table sales date into separate date and time columns. Well, we were told that we only need the date part. And so this is definitely a potential option. As we look at option E, option E says remove the sales table canceled date column. Now, an important thing to understand is that as we look at the canceled date column in the description, it contains null values. And so with inside of this column, we're going to have values that are associated to the canceled date. We're also going to have null values as well. If we remove this column altogether, because it says that we're not considering anything that is canceled, if we remove this, it doesn't actually reduce the amount of rows that we have. So as we look at the status column and we recognize that there are two statuses finished and canceled, if we just remove the canceled date column, it's not going to actually reduce the amount of rows that we have because we're still going to have the two statuses here of finished and canceled. It's just going to remove that one column, which yes, it reduces the columns that we have, but we're still going to have all of those values contained inside of that status column for finished and canceled. So we need to get rid of that canceled. So the correct answer for this question would be A, remove the rows in the sales table status column that has the value of canceled. That's going to remove the rows that are associated to canceled. And we want to split the sales table sales date column into separate date time columns. I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.